Hello there. We are going to look at matrices. The word matrices is the plural of matrix. You have already studied how to solve a system. What am I holding this up for? You have already studied solving systems of linear equations in two variables, <clears throat> otherwise known as the equations of two lines. But now we're going to use a different system called Gaussian elimination. Not regular elimination, but Gaussian elimination. And it's a little bit different, but it's also familiar. So let's get started. This is the solution that we're looking for. You'll see by the time we're done. OK, the difference between Gaussian elimination and just regular elimination, or again, sometimes called addition, is that it's got more rules. But these rules are good for us. We have to write out what our strategy is going to be so we don't forget. So here we go. I want to subtract 6x well, I want to subtract 7x from 6x and get zero. That's not going to work. So I'll have to multiply all of the numbers, all of the terms, in line one. There we go. In line one by a number and line two by another number. That will let me put the same number here and then the negative of that number here, so that when I add them, I get zero. That's the goal. That's the strategy. Always the strategy of elimination. But now with Gaussian elimination, we always eliminate the X's first. That's a rule. So how will I eliminate the X's? Well, six doesn't go into seven, seven doesn't go into six, but doggone it, six and seven will both go evenly into 42 because six times seven is 42. So for that reason, here is my strategy and I don't want to forget it. Seven times L1 will give me negative 42. Well, no, it won't. It'll give me 42x. And I'm going to add that to negative 6 times line 2, because that will give me negative 42. I'll have 42x minus negative 42x. That will be 0, and I will be happy. But not just that. There's one more symbol I have to use, and this is new to you. An arrow and line two. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to change the L to an R, but not right now, because we're dealing with straight lines. So L can stand for line. You haven't seen this before. <laughs> So we're going to do it now. Well, almost now. Let's do it. Seven, line one, is going to be seven times six times x is 42x. And seven times plus three y is plus 21 y. And 7 times negative 11 is negative 77. Good. Negative 6, L2, line 2, 
will be negative 6 times 7x. That will give me negative 42x. And I left my x off up here. Let's put it back. Negative 6 times negative 8y is plus 48y. You can always get these from your calculator. And negative 6 times positive 7 is negative 42. Now I draw my equals bar. And I'm going to add vertically the x's, the y's, the constants. 42x minus 42x is 0x plus 21y plus 48y is 69y. 1 plus 8 is 9, 2 plus 4 is 6. And that equals a negative number plus a negative number. That's a negative number. When you add two negative numbers, you get a negative number. So negative 7 plus 2 is 9. 7 plus 4 is 11. So I'll have negative 119. Now, 0x plus 69y equals negative 119. I'll have 69y equals negative 119. Now, before I solve for y, I'm going to the next step in Gaussian elimination. That's called an implication arrow, in case you're wondering. I'm going to write line one. I'm going to write line two. I like the colon better than the dot. Oh, I put it up here. Let's put it here. The original line one is 6x plus 3y equals negative 11. Line two now, remember that the result of adding 7l1 plus negative 6 line two, that result gives me line two. So the result is 69y equals negative 119. There. Now I do something called back solving. First, I'm going to use line two to solve for y. 69y equals whoop, y negative 119. And as you can see here, I've already worked this out. When I divide by 69 and divide by 69, I did check this in math frac. In fact, let me do it anyway. There it is. Negative one night, well, yeah, 
negative 119 divided by 69. This is just to make sure that that number, that fraction is in lowest terms because it has to be. Ugh. There. Math frac will only give me fractions that are in lowest terms. That is completely simplified. So y equals negative 119, 119 divided by 69. Now I move to line one. Six X plus three Y equals negative 11. This is Y. Y equals negative 119 over 69. Negative 1, 1, 9 over 69. Now I have to find out what that equals. So I'm going back to my calculator. Yeah, let's give you a good view so that you can see it. Wow, is that big. Okay. Three times. Negative 119 divided by 69. Close parentheses. Enter. So I math frack it. I could have math fracted immediately, but I didn't think about it. Negative 119 over 23. Okay. So this is going to be 6x minus 119 over 69 equal, uh, 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 not now, it's 23. Equals negative 11. Let me pull this up again just to make sure. Yes, negative 119 over 23. Now I, I, I have to solve for X, so I'm going to add 119 divided by 69. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, doggone it. Be careful, it is just so easy to get stuck on one number. And that looks for all the world like 17. So let's change that to something that's definitely a one. There. Now, again, I'm going to use my calculator. Okay, negative 11 plus 119 over 23. Negative 11 plus 119 over 23. I'm going to math frack directly this time. Negative 134 
over 23. Let's put it over here. Nah. There we go. We'll have 6x because these guys zeroed out equals negative 134 over 23. Now, because it's easier to multiply fractions by fractions than to divide them by whole numbers, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by one sixth. Well, one sixth times six is one. That will give me X just like six divided by six, they're exactly the same. And now this, my heart's pumping, will I get the right answer or did I make an arithmetic mistake? Negative 134 divided by 23. Oops, when you multiply a fraction times a fraction, you need to put them in parentheses. Let's do it again. Parentheses, negative 134 divided by 23, parentheses closed, parentheses open, one divided by six, parentheses closed, math, rack, enter. Woo! Yes. Negative 67, that is so ugly. Divided by 69. So, our solution, here's the solution of the system right here. Our solution to the system is the ordered pair See, where can I put this? I'm going to put it up here. Negative 67 over 69, comma, negative 119 over 69. There. This right here, this is Gauss Jordan. This is the form your solution would be in if you had used Gauss Jordan. But instead, we used Gaussian. Elimination. This is Gaussian elimination with two lines in two unknowns. It's another way of saying it. In other words, with a system consisting of the equations of two straight lines. Let's look at what we did. First, we used elimination or addition, actually, you're used to doing that. Yeah, I want a pointer. Oh, I'm in danger of doing something wrong here. Okay. So you know how to do what we did here. You've done this before. But this time we had to write out a strategy of what we were going to do. That keeps you from forgetting. So, and then we took this line. Oh, let's make it blue. 
we took we took this equation right here, which is the result of adding 7L1 to negative 6L2 and put it in for L2. So that this now is what we had. Then we back solve if we're being asked to solve. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's easy. Thank goodness for calculators. Let's move on. We're going to get into some hardcore matrices. This is going to be quick and easy. We're going to make an augmented matrix. That means a matrix that's been added to. So let's explain this. These four boxes right here are going to hold what we call the coefficient matrix. I'm going to write that right now. Coefficient matrix. It consists of the coefficients of the variables. So what we'll see is you have a negative two here, you have a positive three here, you have a positive seven here, you have a negative seven here. So we'll have negative two, three, seven, and negative seven. This is our coefficient matrix. The augmented matrix adds on the two constants. Two goes with that line and eight goes with this line or with the equations. This is called an augmented matrix. A matrix that has been added onto. And matrices also use a different symbol than L. They use R for rows. Whereas this is line one, and this is line two. Once we change to a matrix, and matrices don't use letters, we'll have row one and row two. And something that you don't often see written is that this is the X column. It's the coefficient of co coefficients of the X terms. This is the Y column, the coefficients of the Y terms. And this is the constant column, the constants. These are columns. You have three columns. These are rows. You have two rows. And therefore, this is a two by three. Two rows, three columns, matrix. Okay. Remember, you can always back up this video. 
Now we're going to write an augmented matrix from the following system. Well, we already did that. We don't have to do it again. Let's do this. This is more interesting. Write a system of equations that corresponds to the following augmented matrix. Let's put the R1 and R2 in just because you always see that. Now the equation means use X's and Y's. So here we go. To take row one and write an X and Y equation, this will be six X minus three <clears throat> Y equals six. And the second equation, R2, is going to be 4x plus 5y equals negative 3. You can even imagine doing this up here. 6x, 4x, negative 3y, 5y equals, equals, you can do that before you write your equations. Let's do it again, just to make sure you've got that. This is R1, row one. This is row two. The first equation is 2x minus 5y equals 3, and the second equation is 4x plus 5y equals negative 3. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to talk about row operations. There are a number of different row operations. We're only going to talk about two or three. Well, that's not pretty, is it? Perform the indicated matrix row operations and write the new matrix. Well, notice they use capital R's. In my experience, lowercase r's are most often used, but it doesn't matter. So I'll make them capitals, R1 and R2. This means we're going to interchange the rows. R1 is going to become R2. R2 is going to become R1. Why would we do that? Sometimes it makes your life as a mathematician easier. That's why. So now the new row one, I'll even call it that, the new row one is one, negative three fifths, and two, and the new row two, is three, four, and seven. That's all we did. Not real hard, but that's what this symbol or these symbols together in one symbol, that's what it means. Now this symbol means we're going to multiply all of the numbers in row one by negative one fourth. So this is row one. 
This is row two. So what is that going to equal? Negative four times negative one fourth. Fourteen times negative one fourth. Put negative twenty times negative one fourth. This is go negative times negative is positive. Four times one fourth is one. Going to jump over here because negative times negative is positive and 20 times one fourth is the same thing as 20 divided by four, which is five. This, on the other hand, is going to be negative 14 over 4, and I'm going to have to reduce that to negative 7 over 2. So now row 1, row 2, row 1 has become this set of new numbers. One, negative seven, ones and sevens, goodness. Negative seven over two and five. Meanwhile, we don't do anything to row two. It doesn't say two. So three, eight, and negative four. I would ask for questions, but there's nobody here right now but me and my cats. That's another row operation. You can multiply, and we did that in the first problem. You can multiply a row by a number. It means multiply all the numbers in the row by a number. Oh, incidentally, look here. Simplify your answer. That means don't leave the answer as negative 14 over 4. Reduce it to negative 7 over 2. Math frac in the TI 83 and 84 will do that for you. Now, finally, we're going to go all the way here. Woo! We are going to work with matrices. We're going to multiply row 1 by 4 and add it to row two, and then this entire sum will be the new row two. Let me write new up here. So here's row one. Here's row two. And now we're going to work it out. We're going to calculate. Four times row one is going to be four times one is four. Four times three is 12. And four times three is 12. Row two is just row two. Negative four, 12, and four. 
we add vertically 4 minus 4 is 0. 12 plus 12, because you always add, this is 4 plus negative 4, but it's the same thing as 4 minus 4. 12 plus 12 is 24. And 12 plus 4 is 16. So, it does say simplify your answer. Now there's an open question here, but this is the new row two. So I'm going to leave it the way it is, but I will show you an alternative correct answer. We'll have to wait and see what my math lab wants. No, 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 no. Go back. We always use the original row one. One, three, three, and 24, 16. Now in real, ah, should I? In real life, you would probably notice, maybe, that four goes evenly into 24 and four goes evenly into 16. So you would use another row operation, one fourth times row two. That would be your next row operation so that you would have one, three, three, and 24 times one fourth is quite honestly, the same thing as 24 divided by four, which is six. And 16, oh no, I should have divided by eight. See, these things happen. These things happen. I'm going to change that four to an eight. And I'm going to erase this six. Eight. Now. 24 divided by 8 equals 3, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I would have 3 and 8. But as it is, this would be the very next row operation that I would use. But it's not impossible that my math lab would opt for this. The truth is, I don't know. We'll have to find out together. Oh my goodness. Look at the next problem. Oh dear, well, let's do it. Here's row one. Here's row two. All right, negative nine, row one. It's going to be negative nine times one is negative nine. Oh, no, I don't want that right now. There. Negative, uh, negative nine 
times negative 9 over 2. Let me show you something. Negative 9 times negative 9 over 2 really equals negative 9 over 1 times negative 9 over 2. Negative times negative is positive. 9 times 9 is 81. So that's going to be 81. Oh, that's horrible. 81 over 2. All right. All right. 81 over 2. And negative 9 times 5 over 2. I'm just going to change it right away to 9 over 1, negative 9 over 1, times 5 over 2 is going to be negative 45 over 2. We're going to add that to row 2. Notice we're not changing row two, and then we put the entire final sum into row two to be the new row two. So I'll write new row two, though you won't usually see the word new. There. Okay. Well, all right then. Nine, four, two. And here we go with the calculator. I'm going to have to do it with this screen. Okay, I know that negative nine plus nine is zero. That is no problem but 81 over two plus four. Well, 81 over two plus four is 81 over two plus eight over two, because eight over two is four. And now they have the same denominator, so I can add them. And that will give me 89 over 2. Now, negative 45 over 2 plus 2 is negative 45 over two plus four over two, and that will be negative 41 over two. For negative 45 plus four is negative 41. The reason I chose to do it by hand is that the screen is so big on my calculator. Negative 41 over 2. Now I am going to check that because I am not all knowing. I'm going to check this on my calculator. 81 over 2 plus 4. Math frac is 89 over 2. Okay. And negative 45 over 2 plus 2 is 20 and a half. Not what I want. Math frac. That'll be negative 41 over 2. Okay, now. Here we go. Here is the new row. Two. Let's see, this was row two. And this is new 
row two. So now I go back to the original line one, row one, excuse me. One, negative nine over two, five over two. There's a zero here in this position, so I don't have to write it. 89 over 2, and negative 41 over 2. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes you do have to do some calculating. Let's end with this. Row one. Row two. OK. Negative two, row one. See, we're going to multiply row one by negative two and add it to row two and then the entire sum will become the new row two. So, negative two times one is negative two. Negative two times negative two is positive four. And negative two times positive two is negative four. Now two, row two, just regular old row two, is two, four, one. I add them to get the new row two. And that will give you zero, eight, negative three. Finally, an easy one. All right, I go back to the original row one. That's one, negative two, two. And remember there's a zero in the first position, eight, negative three. And there you have it.